Let's open an image and explore the basics tab. Double click my ARW file, which is my raw file, and it opens up into Adobe Camera Raw. This one I'm not going to play with any profiles, I'm just going to leave it with the basic Adobe Color. That's just a good generic profile, but I am going to use the eyedropper to set my white balance. And it's looking pretty close, but I'm just going to click here and see what happens. I clicked down the road because I know it's gray, and I think it's looking a little greener, so I'm going to click over here on the roof of that house. And uh, that's looking a little better, and I can click around seeing if I like anything more or less than something else. Actually, I'm liking right there. I clicked on this white uh, wall over here. Okay, so next up, I'm going to kind of look at my histogram. So my blacks, I'm already starting to get a warning, warning point, which means I'm clipping a little bit, so I'm losing black detail. Over here on the right-hand side, I am not quite there, so I'm going to push my white slider over and see if what I think. So you can see I'm pushing, I'm pushing, I'm pushing. And I'm going to push it right to about the point where I get a highlight clipping warning. So I'm brightening the image up. So if I click this eyeball on and off up here right across from the word basic, click, that's where I started, that's where I'm at right now. So those are the adjustments I've made so far, just with my whites, blacks, and color balance. Shadows. I'm going to open up those shadows. I want to see what's happening in the back or in the bottom of this frame. And I'm going to push down those highlights. And when I push the highlights, look what happens to the clouds. We bring in a lot of detail in the clouds. Just like when we did the shadows, we brought in a lot of the detail in the cars. And both of those are pretty extreme, all the way to 100. I'm going to add a little bit of contrast. And I'm pretty happy with how this is looking so far. Next up, we're going to play with a little texture, clarity, and dehaze. So texture retains the fine detail. Clarity is a stronger sharpening. And then dehaze is used for dehazing an image. But sometimes it's used for effect, because notice I just pushed it to the right, and everything got darker, more dramatic. So some people like that. If you go to the left, uh, the opposite. Now it's we're adding haze to it. So let's see. I'm just going to add a little bit of texture and even a little bit of clarity. And I'm doing that just to bring out some more of the detail. So here's where we're looking right now. Actually, I'm really happy with how this is looking. Do I need to play with vibrance and saturation? I don't think I need to go that far. Saturation just pushes everything. Double click to reset a slider. One thing that I'm looking at that I'd like to do here, I think I'd like the red up here in the liquor sign to pop out a little bit more. So I'm going to come down to the Color Mixing tab, I'm going to click on Saturation, and I'm going to move the red slider. That's pretty fun. If I click on the Hue, Tone of the Blue, I can do that. So I can... I use this a lot to try to match my sky colors between different photographs. But at this point, you guys, I think it's looking pretty darn good, so I'm going to open it up into Photoshop.